Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 12, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. A devotion today is entitled, Lick and a Promise Theology. In our scriptures, Joshua 24. So fear the Lord and serve Him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. When you move from one part of the country to another, you find colloquial sayings you've never before encountered. My family experienced that nearly 50 years ago when we moved from suburban New York to rural Florida. We had barely moved into the parsonage when Jean, a church member, brought us a paper bag full of her garden's greens. She said to Elizabeth, It's not much, but you can probably make a mess out of it. My bride smiled and thanked Jean. Her expression told me she didn't have a clue why she was expected to make a mess with food. To tell the truth, I wasn't quite sure either. A new pastoral family walks on thin ice with local customs, sayings, and other sacred cows. A lick and a promise is one of those wonderment sayings. Loosely defined, the lick is something of a half-hearted attempt to tidy up some mess, and the promise is, well, something of an intention to do a better job later. So, preacher, how does that have anything to do with what Joshua told the Israelites when they were about to cross the Jordan River? Well, I'm glad you asked. To explain, choose today whom you will serve, in the vernacular of Jean's bag of greens, Joshua was telling the people of God that the moment they stepped foot in the Jordan's chilly waters, it was time to leave lick and a promise theology behind. If you're entering the promised land, you do so wholeheartedly. When it comes to the new life that Christ offers, there's no room for licking a promise thinking. Here's a short list of the examples. Hope so salvation. Hoping is no substitute for faith. Now I lay me down to sleep prayers. They don't cut it in the emergency room. Church on Easter and Christmas, that falls short of God's holiness. Good news unspoken to family, friends, or neighbors. That is spiritual gluttony. Short lists are somewhat like a lick and a promise, but you get the idea. God wants all of us, not the little bit we can fit in before running off to do what really interests us. For you today, as Joshua told the assembled new nation of Israel, choosing to serve God means it would be better to do this one thing to the utmost of your strength and be worn out doing it than a thousand other things that please you. You don't worship with a lick and a promise and then run out to the playground. That's what Jesus meant when he answered the Pharisees' question about what God expects. In Matthew 22, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.